In this problem, we're going to work with the function f, which is a function from a to a, and we are going to use the definitions of one-to-one -one and onto to show that it is a one-to-one -one and onto function. So the specific function we're going to work with is f of x equals x over two, x plus 2 divided by x minus 3, and the set a is the set of all the reals except for the points 1 and 3. So that's the set that it works on. And in the first part here, we're going to show that f is 1 to 1. So that's the first thing we want to establish. What does it mean for a function to be 1 to 1? Well, that means that for all x and y in the set A, whenever we have f of x equals f of y, this implies that x equals y. That's what it means to be a 1 to 1 function. basically says that the only way to get to a certain value in the range of the function is via one value in the domain. So there's not multiple ways to get to a point in the range. There's only one way to get to a point in the range of the function. So if we happen to have two values of the function, f of x and f of y equal to each other, well, that must mean that we're evaluating it really at the exact same place. So that's what it means to be a one-to-one -one function. So let's show that this is true. So let's let x and y be in a, and let's assume that f of x equals f of y. If this is a one-to-one -one function, we need to be able to show that x is equal to y. And we can do that just by a direct computation. So what is f of x? f of x is x plus 2 over x minus 3. And we're going to set that equal to f of y, which by definition is y plus 2 over y minus 3. If we multiply both sides by y minus 3, we can get this. So I've just multiplied both sides by y minus 3. And then let's go ahead and multiply this out. On the left side, we would have xy minus 3x plus 2y minus 6. And on the right side, if we expand that product, we have, would have xy plus 2x minus 3y minus 6. And you'll notice now I have an xy on both sides and a minus 6 on both sides. So I'm free to subtract xy from both sides, and I'm free to add 6 to both sides. So that would result in this equation now. 2y minus 3x is equal to 2x minus 3y. So I did flip also the uh, minus 3x plus 2y to 2y minus 3x as well. And now we're almost there. Let's go ahead and um, shift variables to their appropriate sides. Let's go ahead and put all the y's on the left-hand side. So to get all the y's on the left, I need to add 3y to both sides. And to get all the x's on the right, I need to add 3x to both sides. So I end up with 5y equals 5x, which I can divide both sides by 5 and get y equals x. So we've shown for all x, y, in a, when f of x equals f of y, we actually have x equals y. So this is a one-to-one -one function because we have satisfied this definition. Okay, so we got that. f is a one-to-one -one function. In part two, let's show that it is an onto function. So let's show that f is onto. What does it mean for a function to be onto? It means that for all y in a, there exists an x in a such that f of x equals f of f of x equals y. Basically, it says if there is some value here in the range of the function, pick any one you want. That's what it means for all y. So pick any value you want in the range. I need to be able to find an x in a such that when I evaluate the function, I get to the point y. Okay. So tell me whatever y you want in a. I need to be able to find this value x such that this equality holds. That's what it means to be an onto function. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, remember what the function y or f of x is equal to. f of x is equal to x plus 2 divided by x minus 3. So if I think of the output of this function being y, I can write down the equation y equals x plus 2 over x minus 3. And right now we're just going to do a little scratch work to kind of get a good guess for what we think x should be. If I multiply both sides by x minus 3, I get this equation, xy minus 3y equals x plus 2. If I factor out and rearrange just a little bit here, move the uh, 3y to the other side, and then go ahead and factor out the x, I can get this equation, and now I can isolate and solve for x, and I can get x equals 2 plus 3y divided by y minus 1. So now I basically, this is scratch work here, has given me a good guess for what I think x should be. So you tell me y, pick any y you want. I say that this x is an x in a 
such that f of x equals y. So that was the scratch work, and we now have this really good guess. Let's go ahead and actually show that that's the case. So let y be an a. Remember, we have to show that this is true for all y and a. And let's choose x equals 2 plus 3y over y minus 1. Okay, so that's our choice. Let's go ahead and compute what f evaluated at this point x is equal to. So that's equal to f of 2 plus 3y over y minus 1. Now I need to plug that into the definition of f. So everywhere I see an x in my definition of x, and there's two of them, there's one there and there's one there, I need to replace that with this argument, because that's what it means to evaluate the function at that point. So I've replaced it there and I've replaced it there. And now we just need to do some algebra. So let's get some common denominators on the numerator. So let's get everybody over y minus 1. Same thing on the denominator. Let's get a common denominator down there. So now the y minus 1's cancel everywhere. So I just have 2 plus 3y plus 2y minus 2 over 2 plus 3y minus 3y plus 3. If I simplify this, that turns into 5y on the numerator, and that turns into just 5 on the denominator because the 3y minus 3y cancel, and I get y. So I have just found a value x for x such that when I evaluate my function at that point, I get out y. So we have shown that for any y in a, there does exist an x in a such that f of x is equal to y. And specifically, x is equal to 2 plus 3y over y minus 1. So f is an onto function.